today's topic, we're going to be talking about work from home spaces and how to stage your Zoom calls. So you are the professional and the expert and the stager. So your background has to look good and you personally have to look professional. Um, we're going to talk through staging with lighting and we're going to do some behind the scenes. I'm not sure if I want to show you all everything here, but I'm going to anyway. Think through all the lighting in your house. And I'm going to take my laptop and let you guys see. Right now, as you can see, I have every light in my house turned on. All my cam lights. My uh, I didn't turn on my lamps because it was giving kind of weird glow back uh, on the other side of the room. But the best thing that you can do for lighting, as you can see, I've got windows over there and I have windows over here. But look what happens to my face when I'm in front of the windows. I get all dark. And they're like, oh, I want to be by some windows. But oh, I like the view of my fireplace better. But from the side, this casts all those dark shadows on you. You see how that's doing? And then this is more of natural lighting. Just looks how much better that looks with just natural lighting on your face. So you have to think through what's coming out of your head in the background. You know, do you want to hide the art and show the front door? Probably not. So hide the front door, maybe show the art. So think through some of those things. If you're doing calls a lot, then you might want to invest in one of these light rings. So when I come here, I sit in my chair and I have the ring light right behind my computer and that way I'm getting the best light on my face. You do not have to invest in a ring light whatsoever. But it's good to have if you're going to be doing those a lot. It's worth the investment. And, but if not, you don't have to. And just practice either with your laptop walking around like I did or you can just use your phone and walk around and see what the best lighting is in your house. If you have a smart TV, you can put it on YouTube, on your big screen TV, and you can search for white screen, and it's just gonna make the whole TV a white screen. I found one that was like for 10 hours, so hopefully you're not gonna be on 10 hour Zoom call, so it wouldn't shut off on you. But if that's the case and you don't have good natural lighting and you have a space that looks good in front of your TV, you can use that um, light from your TV to light you up. So I think the main thing is to not have the light coming from behind you, um, but from the, on your face from the front. If you're really going to get take this to the next level, you have lights that will light up the back part too. So that's not a cave back there. And I'm going to show you how it really looks when you get behind the scenes here. Okay. So let's see if I can show you this. So there you see, I've got my diva ring light, but I've also got these cowboy lights that are lighting up that bookcase because I, I, Without a white wall, normally it's good, great to have a white wall behind you, um, but I didn't have that in this in here. The dark bookcases, uh, they look really dark and dreary if I didn't have the lights on it. So sometimes there's going to be a space behind you that's kind of a big shadowy hole, especially if you're further out from your backdrop. Uh, if you're close in, it's probably not going to have as much shadows, but if you're far out from it, then it, there's likely going to be some, some pockets of, of stuff. The reason that this is so important for you as stagers, if you're on a call with a client or if you're doing a, a consultation for somebody, they are just as when you come and meet them in person and they're immediately judging you on the, on your appearance and your professionalism and, and everything, they're going to be judging you right now on that Zoom call by your professionalism, by the background. They're looking at, the, at your house in the background and they're going, oh no, I, that, mm, I wanted an expert. So you, this is your time to show them that you are a stager. If it's a mess back there they're, and it's dated, 
they're not going to think that it doesn't show that you know what you're doing as a stager. Now I've got too much stuff going on back here. If I were, I, you know, using it with a client, I should probably edit that down a little bit. You don't have to have a huge, huge, big area of your house though that you're showing behind you. It can be something pretty close. It can be a plain black blank wall and just have a potted plant there or something. It doesn't have to be a lot and you don't have to have your entire house clean and beautiful. I know that it, it's hard to have a whole space uh, that's always staged for those calls. You don't have to have a huge space. It can really be a very small corner. Oh, virtual backgrounds. I really don't recommend those for your staging consultation calls because they look kind of fake. They look weird. Uh, maybe you don't have, you think, well, yeah, I don't have a pretty enough place back there. So I need to do it. It just looks weird. So I really wouldn't recommend that. And they get glitchy. It can cut out your head in weird ways and stuff. And it, it's just distracting. So I uh, really recommend having a real background. It's like we don't recommend virtual staging. You want real to be yes. in front of them. Place a do not disturb sign on the door. Uh, anywhere that somebody might come in and knock or deliver a package or whatever, put a note on the door asking them please not to that you're, that you're in a live call. They may or may not respect that. You know, it, it, things are going to happen still. The thing is to minimize those interruptions, like not, not have your background where people can see into your kitchen behind there, where your family keeps coming and going. It's really distracting. Uh, also make sure that you've checked for any weird cords or cracks or anything that's not going to be attractive or is going to be something weird coming out of your head. The more professional that you show yourself to be with them, the more they see you as professional and as the expert and the one that they want to be working with. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about staging your camera optics. You want your, uh, your laptop pretty close to you and want the angle of it straight up and down. Look, happen look what happens. But you see how it makes the walls all wonky when, you, when it's tipped? Just like when you're taking photos, you need your screen to be straight up and down flat so that it doesn't, doesn't make those wonky walls. I always try to find a straight edge. Um, and if you look at my curtains, like you don't want to have too much floor. You don't want to have too much ceiling and then see how the walls start to get wonky like this. And you don't want to be a floating head with too much space between the top of your head and the top of the screen. So just kind of tilt it down so you're a little bit more centered. And then think through the actual camera on your computer because we're usually the cameras down on the desk so that we can type and then oh I'll take a zoom call but then what happens is that it's lower and so what they're doing is they're getting you like this up your nose you don't want that angle either so you want to make sure that your eye level to the camera or um, it may be a slightly higher the older you are, probably the higher you want that camera. <laughs> if you're wearing a headset to talk to your clients, that's not a problem. But if you have the microphone on the cord of that headset, it can rub against your shirt and get caught in your collar. And it's so loud if you're on the other end. You don't even notice it, but it's extremely distracting and noisy from the other end. And this is a tip. If you go into your Zoom calls and there's a beauty mode and HD, so go in there and you can click on that and it just makes you glow a little more, smooths you out a little bit more. And the HD, the high definition is so much better so you don't become pixelated. As well as your Wi-Fi. Think through your Wi-Fi connection because if you get further and further away from your Wi-Fi connection, you can become pixelated and it gets garbly and uh, can get broken up. So think through all of those IT things prior to your Zoom call. Perspective on a camera, sometimes a web camera or your iPhone can have a wide angle lens. 
So the closer you get to the camera, the more distorted your face can be and like widens out your face. So just look through things like that as well. Think about what portion of your body is in the shot. Like make sure that the, the where it's cutting you is not at the widest part of you, that, that it's, yeah, that, that, that it's, and this is hard to do because you also want to make sure that, like Julie said, that you're close enough but not too close. It's kind of a play with it, figuring out that exact thing. You want to look professional and just as you would come to a, a, a personal meeting, professionally dressed, you might wear a blazer, maybe not, but you're going to be professionally dressed. You're not going to come in your yoga pants, but, um, so you don't have to, on a Zoom call, you don't have to wear a blazer. In fact, it would look kind of weird probably to be in a suit in a Zoom call. They know you're in your home, so you can be a little more comfortable, but just still be professional in those, in those professional meetings. Um, so eye contact. Okay, this one is really, really hard. It's especially hard for me. Um, because you're, the natural thing is to look at the other person, like I, the natural thing is for me to look at Julie, like I'm doing right now, okay? But that's, or to look down at whatever is being read, or to look, it's usually the person, the other person's face is usually down on the screen, but the camera is up higher. It's up at the top of the screen. So now looking at the camera, See how it opens up the eyes and looks much more engaging. Looks, it looks like I'm looking at you now when it's really kind of awkward and uncomfortable for me, but I have to make myself try to do that. So that's why you see us kind of, oh, oh yeah, I need to look at you. <laughs> uh, but do look attentive and don't multitask, which again is hard for me to do. Try to do that. Try to smile and look happy. It's, you know, we, we start listening and kind of, but it, that's not very pleasant to look at. So show that you're engaged with the person, act like you're listening to them because they, they want to feel engaged with you and smile and encourage them. Makeup. Okay, we're not going to uh, venture into makeup tutorials, but I will say one thing, and I've had to learn this the hard way because I am super, super fair complected, and um, it, and I use, I am religious about sunscreen, and so the sunscreen bounces, the light flashing on it bounces back and makes me even way more pale. So whenever we're using the lights and stuff. I have to not use any sunscreen so it doesn't bounce like that and, um, and use a little bit heavier than what I normally would. Uh, so just uh, keep that in mind that it get, the lights will tend to wash you out a little bit and you may need a little more color than you normally would think. So much more powder than what you think because you start to get shiny and reflective because you have so much light on you. Look, I'm now doing the thing that you're probably about to talk about, hand gesturing. <laughs> yes, hand gesturing. And I'm, ter again, we do as we say, not as we do. <laughs> yes, I'm going to sit on them for a moment. I and talk with my hands all the time. But it, see how it's just not very, it doesn't look good because your hands look so much bigger because they're closer to the screen. So it looks out of scale, out of proportion. And so it's better to, to keep your hands still if you can. Really hard for me to do. Um, also eating and drinking. It's okay to have a cup of coffee or whatever and, that you're sipping on, but not don't like eat your lunch. Sit up, good posture. That's another hard one, I tend to slum. So good posture. I was just gonna say a tip for your hands, uh, fold your hands and put them in your lap. If you do that, it's just an extra step to make movement of your hands. It's just a little bit more difficult because then you have to unfold them. So good to be with you guys. Bye. Bye.